All right. Thanks for taking the time and, and joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. My name is Shia Beth. Um, I lead business operations at um, Alia, and I'll be your host for the webinar this afternoon. A um, couple of house, uh, housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded, and we'll share that with you all shortly. It's intended to be an interactive session. So in your Zoom console, you will see an option for a Q&A. Uh, do feel free to submit your questions, and we'll try to answer them as they come in. Uh, we'll be also doing a couple of polling questions, so we'll appreciate your your participation. With that said, uh, we'll get started. So I'm joined uh, by David Bernstein and Ankit Samani. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Certainly. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. David Bernstein here. Um, been uh, in this recruiting and technology world back in uh, 20 plus years now. Uh, started as a recruiter at a company called PeopleSoft, which many of you may know, and been involved in this HR and recruiting, to, uh, and leveraging technology to the hills to support and drive HR business for these 20 plus years. So I'm really excited to be part of the, the webinar today. And we're very excited to have David as our head of partnerships now at Alio. I'm Ankit Savani, I'm a co founder at Alio. Uh, prior to starting Alio for about half a decade, I was at Google working on a bunch of machine learning and artificial intelligence products, putting it out there. Had a great time there and have been having a great time here so far. So I'm really excited to you know be a part of this session. Excellent. So it sounds like you have a good mix of technology expertise and obviously very deep industry expertise as well. Um, so as you all know, you know, AI probably a little over a decade ago, uh, it started as a concept and then it quickly uh, became a mainstream trend. In fact, it's now to a point where it's almost an overused uh, buzzword, especially in, in HR space. So we figured we'll, we'll use this time uh, just to demystify AI a little bit. Uh, discuss some practical examples of how AI is being or can be used in recruiting, and then share some suggestions on as you guys uh, plan your AI adoption journey, things to consider for. Uh, so with that said, we'll start with our first polling question. Where are you in adopting AI for recruiting? Already advanced users of AI, in early stages, considering implementing in the near term, or AI is promising, but they're still looking for the dust to settle, or really what is AI? So we'll give folks a couple of seconds to respond. I will give them Five more seconds. Excellent. I'm going to close the poll now. Great. Thanks for thanks for your participation. Very interesting. It sounds like a very timely topic. Uh, about half of our respondents uh, they think AI is promising, but don't quite know where to get started. And very interestingly, about a quarter are already experimenting. So it sounds like the timing for this conversation is, is perfect. Um, so with that said, we'll jump straight into what is AI? Maybe Ankit, is it is it really analytics on steroids, or is it like anything that talks is AI? What is AI? Yeah, I think both of those can be AI. Uh, if you think about artificial intelligence. All of us are seeing it in our day-to-day -day lives now. If you have Amazon Alexa, Google Maps, Google Home, any of those things, you know, that is artificial intelligence. But if you break it down into key components, it comes down to four things in my mind. The ability to understand. For example, if to an Amazon Alexa tomorrow you said, Hey, can you play my favorite song? The ability for Alexa to understand that, that you're talking about asking to play favorite song. That is part of AI. The next step is reasoning. What is favorite song? Such an abstract concept, right? So how do I really figure out what is your favorite song? Then the ability to act on it and say, okay, I'm gonna play your favorite song and maybe it's who let, your, who let the dog down. <laughs> Not sure what that is, but let's say I play that. But then after that, you might say, hey, that wasn't my favorite song. You know, it was something else. So the ability to take that feedback and learn and the next time do a better job. So it comes out in a full circle, and that's what AI is, and it's core. Mm -hmm. 
And if you actually elevate it a little bit in terms of what does it mean for us, uh, you know, as our practitioners or or anybody who is looking to deploy it, it comes down to three things. And we at Alio use these three things every time we deploy or work on new technology. We look at these three things. One is have you provided a personalized a very natural experience, just the way I was talking about Alexa right now, mm -hmm. the ability to just speak to it, talk to it, and get a response. The second is dynamic automation. And what I mean by that is automation where you don't need to specify every little bit of here's exactly where the decision tree needs to go. The ability for the system to understand that and automatically guide people correctly. And the third thing is around intelligence or insights. And this isn't like pure analytics, just pull data together and show it on a graph, but really understand from that data, it's pattern matching on, on steroids and using it to provide uh, the right level of predictor insights. That is the, the filter that I use every time when I think about AI and products that have AI. Interesting, yeah. I, I think that from an HR perspective, that, that helps frame what HR technology buyers should be thinking about, right? Because it there are a lot of claims going on out there, and so what is and what is not AI, this is a, that's a real helpful way to kind of walk through because there's so much in HR that is about the employer or the candidate experience, so this mm -hmm. is a, that's a great framework to kind of Interesting. It yeah. sounds like three forms, uh, personalized natural experience, mm -hmm. dynamic automation, and uh, intelligence, and it could be one or more of these forms. That's right. And that could be an AI. That's right. Very interesting. You know, there's, there's a bit of a, of a perception that when people think about AI, they think about it's the black box that's independently making decisions, acting on it. And in a movies like uh, Space Odyssey um, or, or the one that's going on on Netflix right now, Singularity, yeah. is not hoping. Yeah. Is that should we be scared of AI? Uh, I think you know science fiction is not doing a, it's doing a disservice to us right now. You know, we go back to the Star Trek days. It was all about futuristic technology, mobile phones, tablets. All of that came from the concepts came from that. And nowadays, every science fiction movie is about you know how it's gonna um, just kill you, right? <laughs> and so, to me, in the spectrum of how to Roomba, which most people don't really think of it as AI, but really it has intelligence in it. It knows what paths to take so that it can clean your house best. I think we are closer to Roomba. Mm -hmm. Maybe Roomba, if, if it had eyes, ears, and a tongue, that would be a much better representation. But closer to Roomba, not really something scary. Think of it more like a helper, uh, something that can do tasks that you don't want to do, something that, which can do tasks which are repetitive, but can do it at a low error rate. I think that's where, we're, where we are in the life cycle. Yeah, and that fits so well with what's going on in HR, right? There, there is so much activity that um, HR is, is saddled with, mm -hmm. that is required to get the work done, but isn't really the value add. So um, not only being the helper, but also from the insights, right? Imagine being able to have that that intel. I mean, it gives you your HR superpowers, right? You've got this ability to be able to uh, free yourself up and unencumbered and now be able to also have the intelligence to be able to play the role that HR really has always wanted to play, that strategic advisor and consultant in the business. That's exactly right. I think of it as uh, allowing humans to, uh, or humans in the loop to do things that they love and AI taking care of everything else. I yeah. think of it exactly that. It's not really man versus machine. It's like, to your point, as Roomba, frankly, I don't enjoy doing vacuum cleaning. <laughs> so those tasks that either people don't want to do, or frankly, machine can do better, yeah. is where AI currently is a, is a good candidate for. That's right. Very interesting. Um, So uh, I've just been told that you guys are not seeing my slides. Perfect. And again, I, um, guys, if you have questions, there will be a Q&A um, button in your Zoom console. Feel free to ask any time. So that takes us to our next polling question. What are you using AI in recruiting for? Right. So we talked about tasks that uh, perhaps AI could be a good candidate. Sourcing, cleaning. Um, I'll launch my poll first. Great. So what are you using AI and recruiting for? Sourcing to find more and better candidates, screening and assessments,
scheduling, onboarding, or all of the above? So I'll give folks a couple of seconds to respond. So while we're waiting for people to respond, I think there's a, there's a question that has come in. How would you differentiate these repetitive tasks from an RPA? I guess it's a, it's a robotics process automation solution. Any, David, any thoughts on that? You know, so it's, I, it boils down to the intelligence. As I would just say real, you know, it's, it's not about a set of um, routine mechanical things that you can just automate, right? It's about, it, it is that, that dynamic understanding. I, I like how Ankit put it. Being able to understand and know what to do next is, is a critical uh, component of the artificial intelligence kind of conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and you know, just to add to that, uh, or just to give a different color to it, it's doing those tasks, but continuously getting better at doing those tasks. Right, over the time. learning aspect of it as well. Right? Exactly. So the intelligence part of intelligence is about showing the right visibility. Uh, to the right folks who want to see those tasks done well. And part of it is the self-learning process. Whether you want to be the gate in the middle of that learning process or whether you want it to self-learn by itself. Um, that is how I think about you know, AI doing specific tasks and getting better. And I think as we talk about each of these uh, different elements, yeah, and we'll that, talk more, right? Exactly, and that mix of repetitive versus intelligence, I think it shows up in the poll results as well. Very interesting, I mean, frankly, I didn't expect this. Half of the respondents are trying AI for the full life cycle. And then if you look at each phase, the highest is, is sourcing, uh, that's about a quarter. So again, half are doing all of the above. Um, um, and the next, uh, next option that got the most votes is sourcing. But I just want to comment, I really like that. Yeah. I mean, the fact that people are thinking about it as a complete ecosystem, as a complete system, I think that is the right approach. Great, so I'll, I'll share my slides again. Uh, I mean, as, as uh, you know, figuring this out, you know, clearly sourcing is a place where people think about uh, starting some of these explorations on the AI side. What are your thoughts on that, David? What do you think about sourcing? Yeah, it, it, the, the, the recruiting process is, is clearly gated by being able to find the right people, right? Mm -hmm. the sourcing is so critical, and whether that's trying to um, uncover existing people that you may already have in your uh, your own talent pools, or discover new people that you've not yet um, that have not had a conversation with, but Having the AI be able to be a neutral, unbiased, kind of um, pattern observing, kind of a, how to find the right people regardless of where they reside, right? Yeah. And be able to neutrally um, surface and identify those. That that's the power here, right? Being able to um, and and free people up because it it's not recruiting to be able to hunt people down, right? Be able to keyword and and, and hunt and peck. That that's not the recruiting. Mm -hmm. and the value in recruiting is bringing the right people to the table, right? And be able to get them excited about this new opportunity and, and how they align the business and, and getting the hiring manager and, and the candidates be able to, right, to, be able to yeah. feel that they want to join up, right? Yeah, and I think that's, that's interesting. And maybe we can help our audience sort of make it very practical. Like if you look at the recruiting workflow, where AI can play a role, right? So maybe if we just quickly um, go through the, the phases. Let's start with sourcing. David, what's the problem with sourcing? Again, th th there's so much uh, if data out there, uh, HR people feel overwhelmed, uh, don't always have the best systems. How do you get the AI? And again, I, I'm a big fan of using the phrasing about uncover and discover. So you've got people that have shown and uh, expressed an interest in you, um, and they are often overlooked. There's a bias often in, in recruiters to uh, that all the good people have been hired, let's say, or, yeah. and let's not look in there. And maybe their tools don't help them do that looking, even if they were interested. So how do we? Kind of uh, um, again unburden recruiters from having to kind of figure that out. Let the AI really kind of understand and look for people wherever they may yeah. reside, right? Um, and, and get that process rolling because it is it is the fundamental first step. And what's discover? Discover, all right. So now you've got to find the net new people. 
Um, but together, right, it, it's, a, it's the right mix of people because you may not have the right people that you need who previously expressed interest, yeah. right? So how do you kind of let the AI set it down the path and kind of look everywhere, right? This yeah. is, and, and it's just a... It's very interesting to discover new people and then uncover people who are already in your database, in your CRM systems, in your ATS, in your talent pool. Can AI help us both discover and uncover? Yeah, I think there, there definitely there's probably more uh, progress in one versus the other. So if you think about the discover aspect, you know, a big part of discover, especially with the advent of LinkedIn, has been you can see the profiles, you can see the skill sets, you don't always know how to reach out to them. And there are several tools that have done pattern matching across the web and have done a really good job of data enrichment. I think tools on, in that space are, are commoditizing. Uh, but still, like it's it's a great opportunity. If you're not using it today, I think it's a great opportunity for you to go out there. I think pricing is also getting more attractive on those tools now because of the commoditization. But data enrichment for uh, discover aspect, I think it's there. On the uncover aspect, that I think is like this hidden amazing opportunity. You know, everybody talks about talent pool. It's not like people are not aware of it. But the way you reach out to talent pool with the right context, knowing the job requisition, knowing the candidate, give you a very specific example. Somebody had, you know, four out of six skills that was needed for a particular job two years yeah. ago, trying to go back to them, you know, two years later and say, hey, I know there was two these two skills which we were also looking for. We didn't find it back then. Have you done something in that time frame? Uh, which, you know, such that you acquired those skills is that now you will be a really good candidate for us. I think a, it's, it's it's a very nice way to approach somebody. It's very specific, and you can have almost these drip yeah. campaign equivalent, which can really have uh, the advantage of uh, getting a very high response. Yeah, and no, that's a good point. So I think you said on Discover side, I know there are tools like LinkedIn, Talent Graph, Pentello, Hard Tool. Uh, they're doing a good job in looking at social media and getting the contact information. But the uncover piece, to your point, often overlooked. Right, that's where tools like Alia, right, you that's intelligence around to your point we have two but we need three more attributes right yeah. and then the natural engagement and then automating to bring them in the in the workflow could be helpful um same as screening i know when i interview people i have two problems one is what it takes to be successful yeah. <laughs> and then two is how to test for that any any ai examples that can help us screening and assessment absolutely by the way i was surprised in the poll that people are using the ai tool is being used least for screening mm -hmm. And that I feel is like completely right for AI, right? Both screening and assessment. And the way to differentiate is screening is about a lot of basic knockout, let's make sure we get the right data, all of that. And assessment is really trying to look for the threat. So I know we have, that was our bread and butter when we started, so we've done a lot there. But the screening and assessment side, completely automated, all the data can be extracted at the requisition level so that you don't need to do anything to set up. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to have a much more dynamic conversation, right? You're having that conversation and in the middle of it, you realize the candidate is disqualified, but they might be qualified for other roles. How do you suddenly put them into that flow, that bucket? Yeah. A lot of opportunity. The only thing on the assessment side I'll add is that it's actually becoming really fun for the candidate. Mm. You know, the whole video gaming experience for trying to look for skill set for a certain job. I think it's a new and fun opportunity. Uh, there's some people who are you know, doing that too. So, you know, recruiters, I think, invented the left, right swipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we would sit on the floor, we would have hundreds of resumes in our lab, and we would have to do this binary decision making. We'd give it a six to 30 second scan, but quickly looking for patterns, and we'd say yes or no. And this mm -hmm. was that kind of left, right swipe. And, and I'll tell you that, the fatigue, right? You can only do so much. And then what would you do? Well, this resume could be a fit for this, but now it could also be a fit for that. And then you'd have to yeah. copy that resume and put it in three yeah. piles, and, <laughs> uh, right? So yeah. yeah, but all that human kind of overhead work that that's, was part of, yeah. kind of making the process. No, I, I agree. I think, um, I think uh, so the, the first part around knowing what it takes to be successful, I think there's a lot of potential, but I would say we are still in somewhat of an early stage, and partly because, you know, the systems tend to be very disparate, right? Your performance management system is separate from HRIS, which is separate from your recruiting system. Uh, but the second part, which is screening and then assessing, and you talk about some gamification tools, like there are Kuru, Pymetric, Hardscore, and so on, uh, that have made a lot of advancements that are available today to take advantage of. Um, we just quickly interview, how hard could it be? 
are beginning to uh, happen, right? It's recruiting across the world, rules of time, and it, the value that is critical to making profit flow, but at the end of the day, um, it'd be much powerful if we actually engaging in Canada and dealing with you know important conversations. So um, be an awesome place to be able to is they available to do that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think interview scheduling, I feel like for the most part, is really just a very complex algorithm. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes up in a natural form, has the perfect availability based on 10 calendars and, and the right set of interviewers, it feels amazing. It feels magical. Yeah. So I think the experience is, is magical. Yeah. But the intelligence of it, a lot of it is a complex algorithm. I think some artificial intelligence components are in there. Uh, for example, you know, one of the things we do is we are looking at interviewer, how well they are matched for a particular requisition, how well that is matched for a certain candidate. I think there are some advantages to the Yeah, answer. no, I, I totally agree. And I think it's a, it's a complex problem. But think about the people angle, right? Yeah. So no show rate is a problem for the interviewers. But the other way around, like roles like, say, a, a barista at a coffee shop, right? That's probably the one time when they are when they have they got a haircut, you know, they suit up and they go to the uh, uh, to the venue just to find out interviewers are not showing up. And that's why tools like ours, right? They you know they do automation, they do reminders that they're available to multi-channel can help uh, improve the experience um, as well. And then I'll, I'll I'll take the onboarding one quickly because that's pretty interesting. I think uh, I have had a couple of jobs in my career, <laughs> and it almost feels like um, you know we are starting all over again, right? Because through the process, the employer knew everything about me, right? My my professional background, my age, and so on and on. And now when it comes to filling up those 401k forms, et cetera, I'm starting all over again, right? And I feel, um, I don't know, are there AI solutions out there for onboarding that can really help? I think not as much as we would like to see. Mm. You know, there are some there are some solutions that, you know, we focused on it as well, but solutions are doing a lot more of automation, but I think there's an opportunity to really learn from the data, yeah. right? These people who've just been given the right offer, they're nervous, they want to choose the right option. Last time they chose their W4 was, I don't know, seven years ago. They don't even know what that form looked like. They don't know what is the right plan. Like you always go and ask your coworker, what is the right health plan that you yeah. chose? So much opportunity to generate that data, learn from it, and don't stop onboarding right when somebody gets hired. You know, the first 30 days can be nerve wracking until we to get ready for the job. So there's an opportunity from a training and you know that's what's needed to make retention. Yeah, exactly and to make it scalable. Yeah. Right? I know one of our clients, what they do is they use um, uh, technologies available to answer any open-ended questions. So it's literally like a hotline that's available in a natural language conversation. So there's a much better experience and a wealth of knowledge that can be delivered immediately. Um, I see this, this a question that came. It's a very interesting one. Can you speak about some of the cognitive capabilities that have been included in some of the interview solutions like HireView, how can we be confident that we're minimizing bias into the process? I think this is a, this is a good one. Um, uh, Judy is still out, but maybe Ankit, is AI a threat to the bias problem or it can help us reduce bias? Yeah, AI is a tool, right? At the end of the day, you can do what you want with that tool. I think it's a really smart tool and you can use that tool to take out some of the bias problems you cannot expect bias to completely go away. The two things you want to make sure is it is not introducing a new kind of bias that you weren't aware of, and you're just completely overlooking it. So for example, the, the question that the person just asked, which is, you know, if HireVue is, for example, I'm not sure about HireVue, but if, if, if solutions, when you're doing solutions, are just looking for a number of times you say, please, or a number of times you blink your eye, or whatever it may be, <laughs> The thing you want to make sure is solutions of that sort, solution providers are telling you how they have taken out bias in the system. Have they actually tested it against a control set, a sample set, and proved to you that a particular caste, religion, gender is not being uh, systematically taken out because of that bias? I think that is super important. So solution providers need to do a better job in explaining how they are taking out bias. Yeah, and I would only add on that then the, uh, the validity as well. So how does that factor that they are predicting also tie to job performance? If they're going to make an advice, a recommendation on who to hire based on this, then how does that tie to the, the job performance outcome? 
Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's neither. It's as you said, it's a tool mm -hmm. that must be configured. But the key is the solution provider needs to provide the visibility on how it's making the decision and the control, right? Yeah. So that you can maneuver. It shouldn't be we don't want our house, we want our Roomba, right? That we humans can can control. Um, that takes us to our next polling question. Uh, what challenges are you facing in adopting AI for recruiting? So we'll give folks a couple of minutes. And share results. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, almost half, about 40%, we are just not ready. It's really interesting because up front, um, uh, uh, people were, it looks promising, you want to learn more about it, and now it's consistent that we're just not ready. And the, se the second one is don't know where to start. Uh, that's also interesting. And the third one is too expensive, or benefits are unclear. So maybe um, we can talk a bit about one, for those who feel they're not ready. Two is those who feel they're ready but don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And then three is you know how to build a, a business case out of this. Um, so while we do that, let me go back to All right. So, you know, planning an AI adoption journey, at the end of the day, it's, uh, as you said, it's a tool, right? It's, it's a piece of HR technology. The process, like any HR technology implementation, identify a problem, build a business case, conduct a pilot, and expand. I think what's different with AI is within these phases, what to consider, what to look for. Um, I know, David, you have done a ton of HR tech implementations, right, from people's tough days, right? Any thoughts on what to think about AI? So the, the paramount thing that's happening right now in HR is all relative to the employee and candidate experience, right? So how do we then find the right place to, um, that's gonna have the biggest impact, the business impact, right? That's going to, we improve this, the experience on the candidate side. How does that draw more candidates into the process? How does that get us the right people? How do we start to measure that, right? Because the, the critical thing is to understand what we're trying to solve for and why, and, and kind of at the very front end, right? Mm -hmm. So how are we going to use the AI and its natural experience, right? And, and that um, dynamic understanding of the workflow. How are we going to use that to drive more efficiency and effectiveness of HR, right? Where, where's going to be that biggest impact? Yeah, okay, so you're saying start with a problem, and the problems that you defined are not new, right? Recruiting is always the same. So it sounds like you, you can still, you should aim for solving the same problem around time to hire, cost to hire, quality of hire, but see how you can use AI to do that. Yeah. Um, so once you've identified the problem, the next step around building a business case, and that's why it sounds like quite a few of our, our audience struggles. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, and I have just a couple of thoughts on the previous part because the number one thing was, I'm not sure I'm ready, I don't know where to start. Hopefully, with the conversation we've had so far, it must be clear that there's opportunities across. You can do sourcing, you can do a screening assessment, scheduling, onboarding. There's opportunities and real tools available across the board. And the biggest point we want to drive is that you do not need a HAL, right? Mm. You do not need a HAL to completely transform your recruiting. You can start with a rumor and the Roomba will give you the right advantage. So you can start small. And that comes down to the business case aspect of it. I think, uh, to me, the right KPI is super important. It comes down to recruiter productivity. So it comes down to how much time they save on screening, sourcing, scheduling. It comes down to reduction in sourcing cost. So really, those are the parameters that your AI solution should ultimately solve because you need to prove the business case. And you need to bring, bring the right people along, right? You need to rally your troops. And the troops that you need to rally are operations leaders, your higher level up, the C-suite, the recruiters are going to be doing their job, and IT folks, because there's a data transfer involved in it. Mm -hmm. Big part of the ROI to me is, a big part of building the business case is choosing the right vendor. Mm -hmm. I think of that as one of the most important bits. So choose a vendor that's proven. And you know, it's, it might seem like, well, of course, but you know, in AI world, it's much more difficult. Everybody comes in with the right slideware and a magical demo. But when they can show that here's a customer, uh, 
you know, taking an example of our, one of our customers, here's a customer who had 50% staffing levels post deploying the solution. The staffing levels went up to 95%, which means their operation leaders saw advantage. That sort of real solid metric, that's what helps you drive the right business case within the organization. Then ease of, ease of deployment, right? It's often overlooked. Like think about ATS deployments. People take three months, six months, nine months. I mean, we work with like a Fortune 10 company. Their ATS deployment plan is two years. Two years, right? So it's really, really long. And you don't want a solution like this to take that long. You want a, something of order of within one month, I'm ready to go. Within three months, I can see the response. Mm -hmm. And then continuously treat it like an experiment, right? An experiment that you tweak and continue to improve. It's not, again, not like an ATS deployment, where you know what you need. Everybody knows you need it just over time. It just takes time. But here, you can continue to tweak it mm -hmm. to get better. And the third thing I would say is the visibility and control part. I'll just echo that. AI is so much of a black box, the way it is sold right now. How do you really ask for the right level of visibility, the ability for you to control it for the use cases that you want to control it for? So it comes down for me to proven ease of deployment and visibility and control. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. And on the, on the business case, you know, I'll share an example. Very simply put, uh, we often do this. Think about screening, scheduling, and sourcing. And now when you put in automation and you have intelligence, Right. How many more candidates can you get? How much of recruiter's time have you saved by not having to manually get time on calendars, right? Uh, by not needing to look at the resume or give them a call to see if they have work authorization. And then you multiply that by your uh, cost per hour and, and you know what, what the savings are possible. And then to your point on the vendor, I think that's, that's a really good point. You know, it's treated as a series of experiments. Someone has done this before, and it's not just technology, right? It's about applying the technology in your domain, you know, by role, by industry, et cetera. And then someone is agile who can start with small amounts of data, doesn't need very deep integration, can quickly implement and scale. So I don't only add, you know, so the, the power of the AI, for, from my view on the, on the HR front, is it does really two things. It, one, um, the, the efficiencies, right? So to be able to do things right, and also the effectiveness, to be able to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so both things matter. And so by freeing HR people up to, to, and to be able to be effective, uh, to do the efficiency, right? We've automated that, but we've also now freed them up to be able to do the right things. And so HR people can now do things that humans have to do, that need to do, that humans are good at, the creative, the, the thoughtful, the personal, right? That, that's the part that we now get to be um, coaching, the advising, right? We get HR and talent acquisition much more engaged in mm -hmm. doing the effective things as well, mm -hmm. right? And not doing things that recruiters do, but, isn't, but yeah. really aren't recruiting, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and that transformative nature of, of that. Yeah, and I'd love to second that point. Um, we've talked about a lot of tangibles, like we've never talked enough about the intangibles. The candidate experience side is where people gravitate towards stuff to build a business case against it, but it is an intangible. That is a differentiator. For many people out there, your applicants are your customers, right? Imagine like Taco Bell hiring for people. Those are also the people who come and eat there. Yeah. So you cannot treat them bad. Also for HR, I think the job is becoming more and more strategic over time. So with the right AI tools, if you get the level of intelligence such that you can go onto your Monday morning, you know, entire C-suite meeting or whatever it may be, and be able to say to them, here's how we are seeing things change. Here's what operations leaders need to do. That was no, that wasn't so much available so far. Getting that insight into the process of where it's breaking, where others can help. Can make them much more strategic. Very interesting. Yeah. So we built a business case. Yeah. We selected a vendor. Yeah. How did we start? <laughs> yeah, and I think it goes back to those series of experiments, right? Mm -hmm. It's about uh, conducting a good pilot. And to me, the two biggest parts of it, or three biggest parts of it, is involve the right people. So involve IT, marketing upfront. So just to be straight, you know, it's not like they are roadblocks, but they are also people who want to help. But they want to be involved early. Yeah. Involve IT and marketing upfront. Make sure the pool that you're testing against is diverse enough, whether there's roles, requisitions, recruiters, locations, whatever your metric is, you have a diverse enough set to know where it works. And then finally, measure those KPIs. You know, the KPIs we discussed about, whether it's time to hire, number of net new applicants, new interviews, time that recruiters are saving, mm -hmm. any and whatever you care about as an organization, measure that. Yeah. And I think within 
we found with every deployment that we have done, people have started to see impact in a month, and they've convinced the rest of the teams in two months. So it can be really, really good. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. I think I'll, I'll share a bit of an anecdote. So one of our clients, um, it's a grocery store. Uh, hiring so hard, especially in Bay Area, you know, the cost of living, and every time they open a new store, finding people is hard. And traditionally, they have been using um, RPO type models that would do the job, but just took a long time, was expensive. And they, they're, they're visionaries, so they wanted to use technology, but it cannot be disruptive, but you just cannot stop hiring. You know, let's say one of our clients, uh, it's like, you're driving a car and then wanting to change the engine, right? <laughs> so what they did is they were pretty smart. They picked a handful of stores and they said, let's strike a balance between using Alio while continuing RPO, right? And then within a few weeks, they saw the results and then they, they adjusted the mix and they grew from there, right? And now they've expanded to like three times the stores that they started within three months in a much more confident manner. Yep. Um, that's, that's very, very interesting. And I think expansion, like once you have people on board to your point, looking at agencies in terms of your business units, even roles, right? When people get comfortable, that's when they get open to, to some of the more sensitive topics such as, such as AI. I think that's, that's very interesting. Um, so again, I'll, uh, guys, if, if you have questions, you know, feel free to um, uh, enter in your, in your Q&A box. Um, while we're waiting for questions, maybe uh, you're yeah, not I'll share one of the, you know, so with the promise in recruiting or, or the holy grail, I'll put it that way, it's, it's long been about turning this reactive activity into something proactive as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited by this opportunity because while what we're doing now in the early stages is really essentially um, smoothing out the current process, but it, as you were saying, you know, we start to kind of begin again to think, rethink and do new things. Um, and start to trial out, right? So as we start to kind of find the places where we can not just do the current process better, but how do we rethink the entire process all together and start thinking about being more proactive, right? And that opportunity to be able to look at internal data and external data and think about your workforce planning and start to holistically bring all this together and who do I have and who do I don't have, who do I need to acquire, right? This opportunity, you know, look at my internal pools, how do I proactively reach out to them? There's a lot of opportunity around the automation and the intelligence to, be able to really make this more of an opportunity for HR than ever before. And it's very interesting. You talked about um, rethink. You talked about proactive. You talked about opportunity. If you were to look into a crystal ball, right, it's a very exciting time in recruiting, right? Uh, it, you know, it's known to be a little slow to adopt change, but now I feel like we're really at an inflection point with so many use cases that, that we are ready. And if you were to think about what the future may look like, I know because you have done a lot of thinking on sort of how the role of it, maybe the recruiter, the candidate, or the HR leadership is going to evolve over time. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, and, and you can look at, you know, as technology has been deployed over the past 300, 400 years, starting from industrial revolution, railroads, cars, so it was always, it felt like they were disrupting an existing industry. Mm. It felt like people, you know, every time, every time people thought, oh, my job is going to go away. And really wasn't that, it was the job evolved into something new. Uh, people always had jobs. And I think the same fear, I want to take out that fear uh, that people have with AI, that what happens for, for my people. I think those people will become much more strategic. Mm. I think of, you know, I have this, this thread that I'm working on, the recruiters are the new programmers, where I think of recruiters as these, these folks who over time would look at this data and say, to the tool directly, give me more insights on X, help me understand why, why it's happening, and then give instructions to the tool to how to make it better. We already started to see the starting of that with some of our customers. But the role of recruiter has become this programmer or data scientist. Mm. Um, and they're naturally inclined to it because they're so worried about the candidate experience or the fact that they need to fill a role. They're really curious about making that happen. Yeah, very interesting. I think that, that, that piggybacks well into a question we received, which is, um, what types of new roles do you see there being in the talent acquisition function? New roles needed due to AI within TA. You yeah. talked about programmers, you talked about data analysts. Yeah. Are there new roles? Well, so I think it is what recruiters have been doing subconsciously, yeah. but not at scale, right? And I think we would it would make sense to expose that a little bit more and train people on that front. So I would call a recruiter data scientist. Just like you have a recruiting coordinator, you'll have a recruiter data scientist. You can really look at the data and say, here's what's going well, here's what's not going well, and here's how we should go about improving it. Mm. Uh, that's a big part of it. 
and I think you would have more recruiting consultants or recruiting solution coordinators, not not just uh, I would say uh, calendar coordinators, but they are looking across different solutions and trying to understand how they fit better to each other. Mm. And I'm seeing a similar evolution as we start to call the recruiters that what the new new role, the new ability would be for them to be like talent advisors, mm -hmm. right? To really kind of evolve from just being, you know, with this reactive person to actually really being a coach and a counselor and an advisor with both candidates and hiring managers and being able to so work with that data science team, so to speak, those the ones that understand the data, but to assimilate that and understand and how to translate that and into the business needs and be able to work with candidates and the, and the hiring managers to be able to bring things together. It's, it's a much more coaching advisory kind of role. Yeah, yep. very interesting. So like today they are running the process. They're picking up the phone. They're getting time on calendars. Tomorrow, they'll be advisors. They will work, they'll partner with business, right, to, to help them identify what, it, what will it take to be successful and then go and sit in the command center where yep. they'll actually configure the machine, right, and learn from it and optimize it for the machine to run some of those mundane tasks. Absolutely. That sounds like the future. Yeah, and I know we only have a few minutes. Um, just in terms of some thoughts that I, I at least would like to, you know, for people to go with one, the fact that it is not hell, right? It is closer to a Roomba. It can do, AI can do tasks that you either don't deem important right now or are taking up a lot of manual time or, uh, you know, need that level of insight. So that's one big part of it. You can start small. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of it as well. Technologies are out there for all parts of the recruiting funnel, sourcing, screening, scheduling, onboarding, that you can use those technologies and make an impact. So that's all I have. Very interesting. Yes, it's, a, it's a fun, exciting time. David, any, any parting thoughts? Uh, I'll be open-minded. Um, this has been long, the process in HR is to, uh, to walk toward, to, towards being that strategic player. Um, so it's no longer a world about best HR for best cost, but really being a contributor to the business. And HR uh, can really view AI as a friend and, and uh, an enabler, right? That's a great way to close it. AI is a, is a friend. <laughs> great. Hey, thanks, guys, again. I know we're hitting our time limit. Much appreciate you all. You're taking the time in the middle of the day. Uh, we look forward to continuing our conversation on, on how AI will evolve recruiting over time. Uh, please feel free to visit our website, alia.com, or drop us a note at um, hello at alia.com. Uh, we'll share the recording uh, shortly, um, and have a great rest of the day.